Hey everybody, Pep on the Woods here. Big South Fork opened back up Monday. Uh, back country, not the campgrounds or the Chuck Creek Lodge or any of that. So, I, but I'm out here on Fork Ridge Road, which leads to Chuck Creek Lodge, and I was gonna go down to it and back around, and I'm still going to, and come out to Sawmill Trailhead, but there's about two miles between the two trailheads. And I ran into that and couldn't go any farther. So I went back up the road a little bit, about a mile. I'm gonna split the difference between the trail down to the Chuck Creek Lodge and come back out the Sawmill Trailhead. So through Jake's place, a uh, couple places like that, mainly looking for wildflowers and whatever else I might see. I'm glad you're watching this. Please hang around with me, enjoy it. Thanks. Okay, we're arriving at the Cherry Creek Trailhead. I'm gonna head down toward the lodge. Got a few vehicles over there, but nobody could come in here today past that tree across the road. So I'm sure those are the people who work down at Cherry Creek Lodge. As far as I know, they're not allowed to come home. If they do, they're not allowed to come back down here because of coronavirus, but we're gonna hike down in there at Upstation Camp Creek. That first parking lot just must have been for cars because there was no trail heading out there. So I went on past the gate, a oh, quarter mile, and I have came to this, which is the hiking trailhead going down into the Cherry Creek. So finally found it. Does it take long for this trail to get interesting? couple hundred yards in and going down one of the infamous ladders here in the Big South Fork. More like a steep, really steep staircase, but they get you up and down. Okay. Yeah, this thing's steep, but we made it down. Right here at the bottom of it though, to the left. Beautiful little waterfall, I'm sure it dries up in the summer, but had a lot of rain lately, so it's going pretty good. Check it out. Little dead hemlock here. Pretty cool. One thing dies. Other things thrive. Man, it is steep down in here. The little stream in the bottom, I don't know if you can hear it or not. That's the one with the little waterfall I showed you right at the start, at the base of the ladders and the trail coming from up there it is nothing but switchbacks i guess eight or ten of them maybe but if it wasn't it'd be too steep for the trail uh, to be made or to travel on now if you've ever been here before you know what i'm talking about if you haven't just thank goodness for the switchbacks Pretty little neat section of the trail here. Some of those big boulders that line the hillsides here in the Big South Fork. And you just wonder how a tree seeded up on top of a rock lived long enough to grow that kind of a root system all the way off the top of the rock into the ground. And here's some more. Pretty cool. It's kind of like that hemlock with the stuff growing on it earlier, you know, you give life a chance, it'll find a way. Yeah, across the swinging bridge always brings out the child in you. Even when you're an old man. But anyway, we're across 
here at the fork. And Truck Creek Lodge is just a few hundred yards to the right. You can kind of see some reflections off stuff through the trees. But we're gonna go on up toward the, part of the Twin Archers loop to Jake's place. And instead of going back up Twin Archers, we're headed up toward the Sawmill Trailhead. We'll show you more as we get on this trail. Here we go. And of course, that's where the Tackett cabin stood. And a little bit of research I've done said that the Tackett's had a couple teenage boys, early teens, and Confederate troops came through and would have conscripted them to go fight in the war, in the Civil War. And Miss Tackett hid them under a feather bed, laid on top of the bed, pretended to be too sick to get up. And the soldiers eventually left, and when she overturned the feather bed to get her boys out, they had both suffocated. And here are their graves. There's some sad stories out here in these old homesteads. It always gets to me. Okay, I've now arrived at Jake's place. Mile and a half from the lodge. You could continue up the Twin Arches Loop this way. I'm not going to, I'm going back towards Slave Falls and out to Sawmill Trailhead, but let's have a look around Jake's place. And as you can see, it's it's a pretty popular backcountry camp spot uh, because you only have to drop off from Twin Arches parking lot, maybe two and a half miles or a mile and a half from Chert Creek Lodge. And from time to time, it's been abused pretty bad and shut down, but it doesn't look too bad now. And of course, there's not been many people in here with the park being closed down until just a few days ago. But for here was the old cabin site. And the remnants of the chimney are right behind the sign. 
And this was built by Jacob Blevins. And he lived here until he passed away. And his wife and two sisters and some more family members are buried on a hill right above here. I've never tried to locate that. But one of his sons moved on down the valley and started the cabins, which is now the Cherry Creek Lodge. Later on, he came up here, from what I understand, and took this cabin down. Took it down to Cherry Creek Lodge and put it up, and it's one of the cabins that you can rent now and stay the night in. Pretty cool story, for me anyway. I've stayed a few nights here over the years. And man, you talk about peaceful. It don't get any better than this. Okay, I'm leaving Jack's place now, headed up toward the sawmill trailhead, across another bridge. It's interesting, I crossed the two bridges coming into Jake's place and cross a different one leaving. Uh, this little area right here is a confluence of three streams. I can't remember the names. I may put them in here uh, later on when I edit the video. But it made a real wide flat area that uh, ideal to clear land and have a farm. And guys, it's just absolutely beautiful down here. Peaceful, gorgeous. Water running any, any direction you turn, it's, it's unbelievable. Time to stop and catch my breath real quick. I heard something down there turning over rocks in the creek. And I do my normal hollering for a bear every couple hundred yards, but evidently in the noise of the stream, he couldn't hear me. But yeah, there was a big bear in the stream turning over rocks about 50 yards from me. So, man, I had to move on. I'm at a high spot where I can see the trail below me and I don't see him anymore, but I'm gonna get on up the trail right now pretty quick. I hope he don't wanna see me anymore and I wanna see him again. Get back with him a little bit. Okay, I finally went back to doing a little video and uh, probably put a half a mile or more between me and that bear, which I don't think he ever saw me. The wind was kind of blowing crosswind from him toward me and he had his head real low into the creek water, turning over those rocks. I, I don't, I'm sure he didn't hear me. And the trail almost immediately turned up the hill, so. Man, I got out of there, but I got a really good look at him. But sorry I didn't get any footage. I, I wasn't gonna stand there long enough for him to see me. It's actually the first wild bear I've ever walked up on in the woods. And I usually make enough noise to where they can hear me, but evidently he couldn't. But man, make your old heart beat, get the adrenaline pumping, uh, Lord. I don't even know if that waterfall has a name. Got a log right in the middle of it, but it's cute. Nice little, probably four or five foot hole deep of water right under it. Little cascade there. 
Really pretty. Just dropped off the side of the trail to get a look at this. Cute little, you know, wet weather falls. No more water than that is. As soon as it dries up a little bit, there won't be any water flowing over it. But look at that. Struggles over the top of it. So, around it we go. Yeah, I took the little side trail up to see Slave Falls. Oh, kind of tricky. I should be about on it. Rainy's just been, there'll be a lot of water flowing. I'll show you in a minute. Plenty of water coming over the falls today. Last fall I did a video, Peppa and Kento with my grandson, uh, goes to Needle Arch and Slay Falls. And we came in from the other side over there. And it was in a drought last fall and there was just barely a trickle of water. So, while I was this close today, I had to come on out and get it again. It is, it's beautiful. Gorgeous little fall. Okay, we're coming up on Needle Arch. I got it pretty good on there in my other video, Pepon Kinto go to Slave Falls and Needle Arch. So there it is, I won't spend too much time on it. Uh, except for the fact that the sign's on the ground. No big deal, but I do know for a fact that bears don't like these signs either. They'll put them down, so. Anyway, we're gonna move on. Okay, now I've come up on this trailhead and I'm gonna take the left on Slave Falls Loop because it comes out on Fork Ridge Road closer to where I parked my blazer. Up we go. <laughs> Be honest with you, this morning I couldn't wait to get off that gravel road and in the woods. Right now, it's getting late and I'm tired. And I'm glad to see this gravel road because right up there somewhere, parked beside it is my blazer. Okay, talk to you when I get there. Hey, it's Papa. I had to walk about a mile on that gravel road and that wasn't no fun, but I'm back. All I gotta do is now is drive home. It's been a really good day, I enjoyed it. Uh, Santa Bear was a new experience and I don't know how to explain it other than it's not really a scary feeling, but it's intimidating because as soon as you see one of those things, you know who's in charge down there and it ain't you. So anyway, uh, if you like my videos, please subscribe to my channel, like my videos, whatever. Uh, appreciate you watching. It's Pep on the Woods and until next time, see ya.